This is the C.J. Silas Show. She's been talking sports for over half her life. You'll hear big-name guests in all the hot topics. Her roller derby sisters call her Dodge Her Blue. C.J.'s proud of her California roots in time in New York, born and raised in L.A., college at USC and Syracuse University. She's not afraid to share her opinions with you. And, like it or not, she wants to be the change. Ladies and gentlemen, all ears and no mask required. Here she is, C.J. Silas. Uh, hey, welcome in live and direct from the ESPN Radio 1280 AM and FM 101.7 studios of the ticket ESPN Radio. Happy to be here because today's historic. I'm so sick of this history coming so late, but it is historic. Tonight, Melanie Newman and Jessica Mendoza will become the first all women duo to call a major league baseball game. That is so amazing. Newman and Mendoza are going to call the radio. No, the TV of the Dodgers and Padres. Listen, listen. That is such a big deal, especially right now when those of us that are in pain, fans of the blue, trying so hard to stay positive when the hated orange and black just can't lose. So the good news is Jessica Mendoza, a friend of the CJ Silas show and Melanie Newman are going to call tonight's game. And remember they've both been in baseball a long time. Newman is the Baltimore Orioles radio play-by-play announcer. And Mendoza has been an analyst at ESPN since 2007. Newman was part of that first ever all female broadcast that happened this summer. Alana Rizzo, a friend of the program, was on that as well. It's just so cool to see. And it's a perfect day for it to happen as well because it's right in the middle of the Women's Empowerment Symposium at the Rose Bowl Institute this week, the third annual. Who's going to be there? Holly Rowe, Nancy Lieberman, Ann Myers Drysdale. Uh, is it Kiki Stokes? I think it's Kiki Stokes, the softball player. Oh, what's the hockey player? Or there's a soccer player, a gold medal soccer player is going to be there. And one of the guests from the CJ Silas show was at the symposium today. And she's going to be on the show tonight. She is one of the winningest women on the LPGA and the Legends Tour, Julie Inkster, on the show tonight. She spoke at the Women's Empowerment Symposium earlier today. It's today... Tomorrow and Friday at 2.30. You don't have to go to the Rose Bowl because the Rose Bowl Institute has been super smart and made it virtual. And if you don't get to see it live at 2.30, you can still go and watch some of that stuff after it's been on. You, If you want to see the live stuff, you got to wait. But then after, it'll be right there on the Rose Bowl Institute website so you can go watch it. And she's joining us today. I'm, I'm so pumped. I've been doing sports radio for a lot of years. And she's been in the business of golf almost has she been? We've been we've been in the business of golf and sports radio almost the same amount of time. She's also from California. She's from the 831, Santa Cruz. She went to San Jose State. And we have never met. And the truth is, when I was working on my national shows at the F Network, at ESPN, at CBS, they hardly ever wanted to talk to women's golfers. It really was not a thing. It's, I mean, golf doesn't get that much play when it comes to sports talk radio. Here locally, Waz and Abrams do, but on the national level, not unless it's one of those huge tournaments. And most likely, usually, it's just when it's a men's tournament. It's just bizarre that our paths are finally crossing now in the second half of our careers. Julie Inkster on the CJ Silas Show. It's Tonight's the night. Aren't we supposed to pick a winner? It's, it's the last show of the month, right? We're supposed to pick a winner for our, our CJ Silas contest and it's easy it's a social media contest though we pick the winner at the end of the show will you please angelica please don't let me forget to pick the winner because i think i did that last month all you have to do is go to instagram and just figure it out go to the cj silas show on instagram look at the picture of darlene who is our last winner and all you have to do is visit our youtube link in the bio subscribe to the cj silas show say that you subscribed and boom you're in and you only, I kind of don't want to say this, but you do, you really only have to do it once. I mean, I'd like you to do it more than once because then, it, then your name's in there more. So if you do it more than once, if you every week go and say that you subscribed to the CJ Silas Show, 
I'll put your name in again. So you'll have more than one little name in the hopper. I taught the interns what a hopper is. None of them knew. And they didn't even think it was Dennis Hopper, the actor, because they're too young to even know who he is. But the hopper is where we would always grab contest winners in the old days before television. <laughs> Just okay, it wasn't that. Maybe it was. I don't know. We're giving away tonight. I think because we were trying to hold off on the Corey Seager World Series bobblehead. Is that that's October, right? Because the World Series is in, okay. So we're not giving away the Corey Seager bobblehead from the 2020 World Series until next month because we're not in the postseason. Normally on the 29th of September, we'd be in the postseason, but because of the pandemic, everything is a week late. By now, we'd be watching wildcard games and we'd be getting pumped for the division games and we're a month, a week behind on that. That's why we're going to hold Corey Seager. That'll be next month. This month, you get to choose either a Laker championship poster in honor of the NBA training camp started this week. You can also pick the Kobe Bryant sign poster or a CJ Silas show t-shirt or hat. It's a new baseball t-shirt. And that was Amanda's idea, by the way. Intern Amanda said, why don't you get a baseball t-shirt? You love baseball so much. All you have to do is go to Instagram and, and you still have time. We'll put your name in for the next hour. I've got interns here that'll do that for you. So get in and get on it. The NFL contest is closed. If you didn't get me your NFL picks, you had an extra week on that. Gosh, the pandemic is giving people an extra week in a lot of things. Extra week of Major League Baseball. It's not really an extra week. It's just, it's, it's a week later. You get on extra, you really didn't have to do your NFL picks until after game, game one, the first week of the season. How nice was that? Well, really, the reason that was is because Dr. Kurgis got stuck at the office. He's a doctor, and it happens. So because he didn't get his picks in for a week, I gave everybody that chance. So, and we really, because we have that extra game, we're at 17 instead of 16. It's sort of like a regular season now. You got your NFL picks in if you did after week one. So that contest is closed, but the social media contest will go on and on until we run out of prizes, which is super cool. Next week, the 500th edition of the CJS. Oh my gosh. If you told me on Saturday morning, March 31st, 2000. 12, March 31st, 2012, a Saturday morning, that the show was going to turn 10 years old in March, that I was going to have 500 shows, I would not have believed you. Because I was just lucky to have one at that time. I was just, I could do one. One at a time. We're still doing one at a time, obviously. So next week, here's the thing, a programming note. Because of the wild card game that most likely will be the Dodgers and Cardinals on Wednesday, we will be on after that game. For some reason, if the Giants lose the, their next five games and the Dodgers win their next five, which would be amazing, and the Dodgers win the NL West, we won't follow the Dodger game on Wednesday because they won't be playing the Cardinals. The hated Orange and Black will be playing the Cardinals, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay positive. Please, just follow us on social media. Listen to the radio, and you will find out as soon as we know after this weekend what time the Dodger game is on next Wednesday, if it's if they're playing in the wild card, whether we're going to be on at our normal 5 o'clock or after. If the Dodgers play the Cardinals in the wild card game, we're going to have a socially distant, safe watch party. And it might just be me and the interns. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to watch it somewhere near the studio together so that we can haul our... we Actually, we could probably just order food in and watch it here. That might be a better idea, so then we're not around all the crazy people in the public that are touching their face and coughing on friends and picking their noses. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. We'll do that. If we come on after the Dodgers card... Okay, this is all ifs. If the Dodgers are in the wild card game against the Cardinals, who, by the way, have won 17 straight, and nobody wants to meet the Cardinals right now. <laughs> If the Dodgers and Cardinals play in the wild card game next Wednesday and we find out that it's a five o'clock game or it's a seven because it's in L.A. because L.A. does have home field for the wild card game. If it's a five o'clock game or a three thirty game or a seven o'clock game, whatever it is, we're coming on after the show, after the game. The show will come on after the game live. So no adult beverages, y'all. No adult beverages, interns. Just we'll watch the Dodgers together. Wait a minute. We have some hated orange and black fans on the crew. How's that going to be? That's going to be awkward. Watching the game together? Weird. Ew. Okay, here's the rule. You can root for whoever you want. You just can't be obnoxious about it. That's the only thing. I don't mind people because I, I think the Dodgers 
And the hated orange and black is the best rivalry in sports because it started in New York in the 50s. I don't mind. I do. I don't mind rooting hard against each other. But what I do mind is disrespectful stuff and, and like taunting and being jerks. There was a year. It was the year the cheaters won. the. It was game seven. You Darvish was on the mound. And I was watching at Shell Beach Brew House, which, by the way, I love that place, but I will never watch a baseball game there again. A guy who was a fan of the Hated Orange and Black was so rude, he went to his car by the third inning. I think the Dodgers were already going to lose. Remember game seven? It was awful. Maybe not for you, but this guy went to his car to get like a Will Clark jersey. Okay, first of all, he wasn't old enough even to know who Will Clark was. Second of all, it was the Astros they were playing. It wasn't the Hated Orange and Black. And he was in my face like... He was pointing and almost touching my nose. And I don't drink a lot when I watch important games because I don't want to bite someone's finger or break it because I have that in me. That's why I play roller derby. I do not mind passionate fans who hate the Dodgers. I do not mind passionate fans who hate USC. I do not mind passionate fans who hate the Dolphins. And really nobody hates the Dolphins because the Dolphins haven't won anything since the 70s. But I'm just, what I'm saying is, I don't mind passionate fans that are respectful in the way they root against your team. In fact, one of my friends, Michael Ver- Veritas, gosh, I never say his name right. He is a former Derby ref. His wife and I, Red, played against each other when she played for V-Town and I played for uh, Central Coast Roller Derby and we became fast friends. I don't know why. The th- she and I just totally liked each other, loved the husband. They've had two kids. And the first kid I sent him a like Dodger Blue Something when the kid was born. He was so mad, but he loved it. But he and I have a very serious Dodger, hated orange and black social media rivalry. And he's never disrespectful. He's funny. He's very funny. It's the jerky ones. In fact, I don't usually, I don't think I let those, I think I erase those. I think if you're a jerk on social media and you can't keep it clean, I delete your comment. I'm just saying. But there's another one, Cheeto Moya, who's my former manager when I was a bartender at Mr. Rick's, like, 15 years ago, he's a gnarly fan of the hate of orange and black, but he's never a douche. You know what I mean? Can we say douchebag on the air? Douchebag, douchebag, douchebag. Okay. I like that word. And Gellicky's like, she's 19. What's that? <laughs> it's a bad word for people. Later, we'll talk about it. Black History on the CJ Silas Show all year long. We are continuing to celebrate black and brown people who have done things not just in sports, but also in the civil rights movement and made a difference and had not gotten credit. So that's what we're doing on the C.J. Silas show. We're just going to keep doing it. Just saying. On the 500th anniversary show next week, and then we have our 10 year in March, we're going to talk about how the theme and the the vibe and the mood of the C.J. Silas show have has shifted Uh, Twice. Uh, It shifted once when I was doing the sports bite with Mike Wozniak after 9 11, I think. Was that what it was? No, it was. Oh, no, it was Hurricane Katrina. And then the big shift on the CJ Silas show was after uh, May 25th last year when George Floyd was murdered. And we're going to do it. Just going to, and we'll talk about that on the 500th show. And we'll talk about that for sure on our best of the CJ Silas show that's coming in January and our 10 year anniversary party in March. I'm listening to the radio today, and I listen to all types of sports radio. I listen to satellite radio, so I listen to MLB Network. I listen to ESPN. I listen to the F Network. I listen to all the networks. I listen to all of them. I don't, I'm not going to lie. I don't listen to the NHL Network. I don't even know if there is an NHL Network. Just saying. And it's the most exciting last game, last week of the Major League Baseball season, and not, not many people are talking about it. And there's a lot of good stuff. The American League wildcard game. Push is crazy, and I'm a Mariners fan. That's my AL team, and my family lives there, and they're all big fans, and we love Mitch Haniger because he, he played at Cal Poly. There are reasons why baseball is not getting the play that it should this week. Some people don't care, and why aren't enough people talking about it? I have three reasons. You can agree or disagree. In fact, agree, disagree. Doesn't bother me at all. Three reasons. One, the media. When you listen to 24-hour sports radio on a week like this, you should expect to hear, you should hope to hear, respectfully, a little bit about what's going on in Major League Baseball. Some teams have four games left. Some teams have five games left. The NL West, there's still a battle. There's still a battle in the NL East, sort of. 
between the Braves and the Phillies. Uh, wild card. But for some reason, because coincidentally, the NFL has the Patriots and the Buccaneers this weekend in New England. First time Tom Brady goes back. Yes, that is something you should be talking about. But I also think that there's enough time in a radio show, whether you're an hour, two hours, or three, that you can find time to balance it out and talk about both. One of my three reasons why we're not hearing about Major League Baseball is because the media thinks, people don't care, the media thinks the NFL rules sports talk radio and sports media. That is the only sport that is talked about on sports radio 365 days a year. In fact, Colin Coward has said himself that in his meetings, they say, what are we going to talk about in the NFL this week, even if it's July? Even if the draft had already gone by and training camps haven't opened yet. You've got to talk about the NFL every day. That's not my concept. That's not my theory, and that's not my process, obviously, because you listen to the show. You know that's not what I do. I talk about the NFL when there's a story, when there's something something interesting. I don't talk about it just to talk about it. That's reason number one. Reason number two is Major League Baseball is not doing a good enough job at promoting its sport. What do I mean by that? Major League Baseball needs to make their players more accessible to the media. I just said I don't listen to the NHL network on Sirius XM. I don't even know if there is one. I'm sure there is. The NHL and NASCAR are two of the sports that have the most available players, coaches, drivers, teams. They know how to promote their sports. They make these guys available. Major League Baseball doesn't do that. If I call Major League Baseball and I try to get a player on the team, the on the team on my show, there's got to be a connection. They've had to go to Cal Poly. I've had to talk to them before. They have to be from this area. I mean, there's so many things you have to do to get that guy on the show. And there's the gatekeepers. Well, I don't know if your show's big enough. I don't know if you have a big enough audience. Well, we're in 21 countries, mofo. We're on the internet all over the country live. And my gosh, I'm C.J. Silas. Please. National Football League. They find a way to schedule their stories, schedule things to happen at certain times of the year so they can get the attention. Does the NFL make their players and coaches accessible to us in the media? Maybe a little bit better. But the money spent, I'm guessing, and I don't know, and maybe you can look this up, Angeliki or Gabe, how much marketing money does the Major League Baseball League have, does MLB have, and how much money does the NFL have for marketing? And it's not, you're not going to be able to find the answers quick, quickly, but when they get, let's just say a million. I'm just going to use the round number until maybe you, got, you two can find it. If they have a million dollars a year and 365 days, how do they divvy out what they're going to do in their marketing? And they're always marketing their players. In fact, what story came out today? Didn't Richard Sherman just sign with someone? And that's a big story in the NFL the same week that all these teams are fighting for the American League wild card, that the Dodgers and Hayden Orange are black are fighting for the NL West, the Braves and Phillies are fat. It's just, it's just crazy that these things happen timing wise. Another thing about why we hear so much more about the NFL than we do Major League Baseball 365 days of the year is there's a way for the National Football League to get attention because sometimes, a lot of the times, when the players that commit crimes, their story's going on all year. Richard Sherman had a uh, physical altercation with someone in his family. That's going to be going on. Uh, Deshaun Watson, don't even get me started on him. I've already decided, by the way, if you've been listening to the show recently, I know what what team I'm going to pick if the Dolphins take Deshaun Watson. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but I just want you to know that I have come to terms with the fact that after 40 plus years, I may not be a Dolphin fan anymore if they decide to sign him. That was a side note. (laughs) Or a tangent, or just me having my craziness. The three reasons that people don't care as much about the last week of the Major League Baseball season are the media. Major League Baseball, and the NFL. You can find a way, MLB, to do it better. I don't know if it's money. 
if it's timing. I'd, I'd put a Major League Baseball player on every week if I could get one. It's just not that easy. you got to go through 15 people and email. Now, with the pandemic, you can't even call an office because nobody's there. At least in the past, there'd be a, an assistant or someone that would pick up the phone when you're trying to book someone. Now, it's all an email. Whew. That's, that's that. Julie Inkster from, gosh, so many amazing t- talents in, in golf, in the LPGA and the Legends Tour. Almost 30 years of playing, and she is at the Women's Empowerment Symposium at the Roosevelt Institute this week. She'll be on the show in just a few minutes. Black history celebrated on the C.J. Silas show. Snoop Dogg, born October 20th, 1971. His fame dates all the way back to 1992 when he was featured on Dr. Dre's debut solo single, Deep Cover. And then on Dre's debut solo album, The Chronic. He has since sold over 23 million albums in the United States, 35 worldwide, 35 million. I don't even, and a lot of people don't even know what an album is. It's an LP, kids, just saying. In 2005, Snoop Dogg founded the Snoop Youth Football League for at-risk youth in Southern California. In 2018, it was claimed to be the largest youth football organization in Southern California with 50 teams, more than 1,500 players. Following the deadly shooting of five police officers in Dallas, July of 2016, Snoop Dogg and the game organized and led a peaceful march to the L.A. Police Department headquarters. Snoop Dogg partners with city officials annually gives away turkeys to less fortunate in Englewood, California on Thanksgiving. He gave away 3,000 a few years ago. And just so you know, Snoop Dogg is an awesome follow on Instagram. He kind of overposts a little, maybe. He does some kind of inappropriate, raunchy things. But it's entertaining. Snoop Dogg. Derek Rose, born October 4th, 1988. Named the NBA Rookie of the Year. Also became the youngest player to win the NBA Most Valuable Player in 2011. He was only 22. Rose is a Christian and has spoken about his faith, saying God does everything for a reason. He wears a wristband that says, in Jesus' name I play. In 2018, he introduced the Rose Scholars, a scholarship program to help students achieve a higher education. Rose has struggled with a lot of knee injuries since his MVP season in 2010, 2011. Jerry Rice. Oh, one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. It was a, it was, I got to sit next to him. We were putting it on a cassette tape. I know, weird cassette. In San Diego for the Super Bowl in January of 1998, I think. Jerry Rice, born October 13th, 1962, an American former professional football player who was a wide receiver in the NFL for 20 years, primarily with the San Francisco 49ers. Widely regarded as the greatest wide receiver in NFL history, and one of the greatest players in NFL history. He's the career leader in most major statistical categories for wide receivers, including receptions, touchdown receptions, receiving yards. He was once the leader for total yards and touchdowns in a season. He scored more points than any other non-kicker in NFL history with 1,256. Rice is also remembered for his work ethic and dedication to the game in his 20-year NFL career. He missed only 17 regular season games, 14 of them in one year, 1997, and the other three in the strike-shortened season of 1987. Really, that means he only missed 14 games because the strike shortened was the strike shortened, right? Jerry Rice. And I'll never forget, we, we were sitting outside at a hotel in Mission Bay, California in 1998. I'm pretty sure, who was playing in that Super Bowl? Buffalo? Buffalo and Dallas? Buffalo? Broncos, Packers, I don't know. I'm just saying. It was January 1998, and it was in San Diego. Yeah, you know what? I think it was the Packers. I think the Packers were in it. Anyway, I got to, it was Broncos, Packers. I was, oh, gosh, my brain. You know, sometimes it does work. So I'm sitting in a courtyard with Jerry Rice, and I've got my cassette player in front of me, and we're talking. And I, in fact, I think, Gabe, that we have that in our archives I think we do have that in our archives. And if we do, we need to get, get that out and play that because he was born. We need to use that for our flashback Friday in October to honor his birthday. Oh, goodness. I love the, I love the black history that we do here on the C.J. Silas show. 
The Cardinals are 17 on a 17 game win streak. It's crazy. I already mentioned that. I think I, t- I got to everything. Awesome. Well, I'm going to just, we got to get to Julie Inkster. I do want to think, oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, no, I'll do this at the end. I do want to talk quickly about what's going on at the end of the Major League Baseball season. I thought I would have time, but instead I was complaining the whole time. But I did save some. We'll get to it at the end, right around when I give away our September contest. I do want to thank my partners, Daniel Lapidus and Larry Ackerman, the best dentist ever. Joy, Shell Beach, Avila Bay Athletic Club and Spa, Michael Moore Sports Recovery, the Slow Wellness Center, Dermatologist Dr. Brad Kurgis and California Fresh Markets, where I was today, by the way, and I love that place. They have so many choices of kombucha, hard and soft, <laughs> if you know what that means. One has alcohol, one doesn't. I love it. California Fresh Markets, the original El Rancho in San Ynez. Cali Fresh in Pismo Beach on Five Cities Drive, where I shop. And I had a smoothie today because the smoothies, I don't usually get them, but there was an overload of smoothies, and they handed me a smoothie today when I was walking in. Here, there's some extra. It was delish. Foot Boulevard in San Luis Obispo, California Fresh Markets, the best. Julie Inkster, one of the most talented, winningest golfers Still active on the LPGA Tour. She's coming up. It's a CJ Silas show. Thanks for listening. And if you can't live, please find our podcast anywhere you find yours or the CJSilasShow.com. Yeah, here we are live on a Wednesday on ESPN Radio 1280 AM and FM 101.7. The ticket. The CJ Silas Show is back. Make sure your seats are in the upright and locked positions. Carry on luggage stowed and opinions intact. Here she is. C.J. Silas. Welcome back to the C.J. Silas Show. There are times in my career, and if you listen to me on a regular basis, it's been a very long career. But there are times when I get to speak to women that have been around maybe as long as I have or a little bit less. But they're kind of in my age group, but they're continuing to pay it forward, continuing to help empower the youth, continuing to inspire women from start to finish. And this woman, who's never been on any of my shows at the national level here in San Luis Obispo, nowhere. And so I kind of have a little bit of nerves. I'm not going to lie. She is one of the best that's ever played the game. A 29-year pro career in golf. She's from Santa Cruz, so she's a central coaster, really. We're going to call her that. Julie Inkster from the LPGA and the Legends Tour joining the CJ Silas Show. I'm, I have to say I'm a little verklempt, a little nervous to talk to you because you're kind of someone I look up to. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I appreciate you having me on and, and uh, talking uh, women, girls, ladies, young ladies in sports. We didn't have anyone, Julie, when we were coming up. Uh, maybe one or two kind of sprinkled into to our careers, me in broadcasting uh, and you in golf. Uh, the Rose Bowl Institute, which is this incredible group of people. It's a collaboration with Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena. They've taken this pandemic, and what they've done is they've created something virtual that maybe they never would have done so successfully. And this week is, to me, the, my favorite one. It's a woman's empowerment symbol. Symposium about leadership, confidence, character, sportsmen, but I call it sports personship, citizenship, just a little bit of everything for young people in high school and in college, both men and women. And you're one of the speakers at the event that's happening uh, for three days. Why was this event important for you to be a part of? Well, like you said, I mean, growing up, we didn't really have any people to look up to. You know, I had two older brothers, and I played the baseball, basketball, football thing with them. Um, you know, when we when I was growing up, you know, if women, if uh, high school or middle school players, uh, women played sports, they were classified as a jock. You really had to be pretty confident in yourself to do what you love to do. I, I remember... One year uh, in sixth grade, I went out for cheerleading, and I made it, and I hated it just because I did it just because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And I kind of prom- promised myself after that that I, I was going to do the things that made me happy. And sports made me happy. It made me confident. Um, it made me a better um you know, mom now, I mean, he, um, my husband would probably say not a better wife, <laughs> but uh, it definitely helped me in my career um, as far as going forward. And uh, I just think sports for, for girls is, is, 
is so needed for confidence and for teammates and for, you know, staying out of trouble, getting organized, um, just finding a path in your life, whether it's sports or, or anything. She's got seven major championship wins, six legend tour wins. She's the 1984 Rookie of the Year in the LPGA, 45 pro rims wins. She's in the World Golf Hall of Fame, and now she's she can put up on her accolades. She's been on the C.J. Silas Show. Julie Inkster is joining me this week. So just a cool event. Julie, you've got women Holly Rowe, uh, Violet Palmer, Nancy Lieber, Miss, Misty May, Hillary Knight. I mean, these women that you're around this week as you're trying to lead, empower, and inspire young people. I, I, I'm guessing because it's virtual so you don't get to be in a room and sit on a stage with them. When you hear all those names and then yours is put there with them, how does that make you feel? Well, just as you read that list, I mean, these are all very successful women on and off the court or the playing field or, or the golf course or whatever you want to call it. And they're all trying to play it forward, trying to play, you know, pave the path for uh, young girls to get started and, and to get uh, motivated in sports and also to bring awareness to women's sports. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan um, you know, I grew up with the Mia Hams and the Julie Foudis and the Brandy Chastines. And, um, you know, we were really close. Um, well, we are really close as I was playing golf and, and they were um, dominating the soccer league. And we, we would go out and we'd have dinners and we'd talk about it. Um, so I think the more we can get our word out there as far as, you know, follow your path, follow, follow your passion, um, I think the more successful, the more CEOs, the more corporations are going to take notice. If you look at the events this this week, the Rose Bowl Institute, you can find it at rosebowlstadium.com. It's a women's empowerment symposium. It's the third year. Uh, day one, sportsmanship. Day two, leadership. Day three, citizenship. Did you get to pick which day you were involved in and the theme that you got to sit and be a part of, or, or did they assign it to you? Um, well, you know, I'm a rookie. I'm I'm like the lowest person on the totem pole. I just uh, <laughs> joined uh, the Rose Bowl Institute last year, and you know, right in the pandemic, so um, they assigned me uh, the sportsmanship um, path. Which you know, I, I think any of them, I would have been honored to be um, invited, but um, that was the one that uh, they they asked me to do. And when you spoke earlier today, what are some of the messages that you gave these young people? It's not really all about winning. Yes, everybody wants to win. It's all about, um, you know, developing a foundation for what you're trying to do in your life and, and go forward. Um, you know, in golf, uh, if we have a great year, we win maybe once or twice. So we're losing a lot. Um, and it's how you handle those setbacks, how you work harder at what you're trying to, to, do, to do to succeed. Uh, and, you know, golf is a very humbling game. It's how to stay humble, but also be uh, confident in what you're doing. So that was kind of the message I try to uh, bring across. I never thought when I became an elder statesman in this business, if that's what you want to say as a woman in broadcasting, and I fought through it, oh my gosh, just like you, I fought through it in the late 80s. Women in sports journalism and media, not accepted at all uh, when I started. So you, I kind of get it. We, we know where we've been. So now here we are. It's 2021. And young people come up to us. I'm sure this happens to you all the time when you're out on tour, when you're doing speaking engagements, whatever you're doing. And they look at you and they give you these eyes and they're they're so naive and they're so interested and they're so ready for anything. And, and I look back at my life and I'm curious if you went through the same thing and you kind of see these women and they're untouchable. But because of the Internet and social media, which isn't always positive, we as Older women in this business, we can connect with the young people. We can have interactions. We can have interns. We can meet young people and help them uh, to better themselves in the future. In your heart, in your soul, as a woman that has spent almost 30 years in your career, how are you touched when you get to inspire and empower and engage with young women? It means a lot to me. I have this thing called Ju the Julie Inkster Award, and it's I've just done it the last couple of years, and it's to um, to reward a senior uh, collegiate player for for staying all four years in college and representing their their coach, their teammates, their university, and they get to spend 
I don't know if they get to, but I make them spend two days with me. <laughs> and we we go out and we play golf and we have dinners. And, you know, I try to help them, you know, navigate their new career going on the LPGA. And that's the stuff that inspires me and to be able to – because I never had that. You know, we were just kind of thrown to the wolves. I'm sure you were too. I mean, I'm not even sure you probably weren't even allowed in the locker rooms back then. You know, and how are you supposed to do your job when you can't even talk to the players? It was kind of the same way with us. You know, we we were always, we were still our second fiddle to the PGA or the Champions Tour or the Corn Ferry Tour. So I always try to, you know, you can't make your passion about the money. You have to just go out there and and do your best and work your hardest and everything else falls into place. That's kind of the, the way I try to play it forward is try to give back to the younger players so they kind of understood. And not and myself, I mean, when I first started, I didn't know we had 13 founders, these 13 amazing women that travel the world in cars, travel the United States in cars and went from tournament to tournament and set up their own um, golf course. They set up, you know, they did their own programs. They did all the media. They did the dinners. And then they'd load up and go to the next tournament. Those are the ones that paid the path for me. You know, the more I think you can learn about how we all started and how far we've come and how far we still need to go, I think, you know, it's – it's. Um, I think sometimes, especially with golf, it's such an individual game. You just think it's about you, but there is a bigger picture out there. No question. She is an All-American from San Jose State, also in that Sports Hall of Fame at San Jose State. And she's one of the most prestigious women uh, still playing golf, not only on the Legends Tour, but as we were talking about earlier, you do play some LPGA events. How do you choose the events that you're going to play? You, you talk about the younger generation. I mean, I'm playing, I'm 61, and I'm playing with uh, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Good thing my golf clubs don't know how old I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was, I was playing a um, couple years ago, and one of the younger players comes up to me when we're on the golf course, and, and she goes, Can I ask you a question? I go, Yeah. She goes, When you were playing like a rookie, or how did you go about getting water? Because, you know, a bottle of water. We didn't have bottled bottle of water. And I go, well, they just took 18 Gatorade buckets and went a, a hose and just filled them up and put them on the tee. And she goes, well, what if you were thirsty in the middle of the fairway? And I said, well, you better drink up on the next tee. So <laughs> stuff wow. like they, they just, yeah, they, they just can't comprehend, you know, some of the things we went through, um, you know, that, that uh, they wouldn't even dream of. Nicole Lynn is a sports agent. Holly Rose from ESPN. Violet Palmer, a retired NBA official. Hillary Knight, a gold medalist in hockey. Nancy Lieberman, a Hall of Fame basketball player. Misty May Trainer, a Hall of Fame and an Olympic a volleyball player. Kiki Stokes, former pro softball. And Julie Inkster, current player still on the Legends Tour and in the LPGA, joining the CJ Silas Show. You can find her event over the next three days at the Rose Bowl Institute. If you didn't get a chance to listen live today, it will be at 2.30 each day, and then you can go right to that uh, rosebowlstadium.com to listen to any of the events of the Women's Empowerment Symposium this week that the Rose Bowl Institute has put together. Such a cool list of women. And then I only mentioned the big names in sports. I mean, the women in business that are showing up at the event this week to instill character-based skills to young men and women, to inspire to empower targeting high school and collegiate students at the Rose Bowl Institute. Julie, you, you look at life. It's kind of odd because we coincidentally have a circle that's small because you know uh, Caroline, who's the volleyball coach here at Cal Poly, because is it her husband? How do you know her? Her dad and her I dad. went to high school together. He, he wow. went to that school called Aptos, and I went yep. to Harbor High. Wow. Um, we were rivals, but we, we all... we. We played sports, and that's really how we got involved with each other. When you get your name thrown out like I just did with all these other women, do you sometimes look and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, was that my life? Wait, wait, wait. Did I did I play in all those events and win all, win all those events? Do you sometimes surprise yourself at all of your success? Oh, definitely. And as you know, when you're doing it, you don't really look back. You just keep putting a foot in front of uh, each other. It's like when you win a tournament on Sunday, you know, you go to the next tournament, and on Monday you're starting just with everybody else. So um, you don't really have a time to look back and reflect. But, 
Yeah, if someone told me when I was uh, going to Harbor High or I was going to San Jose State that I'd be in the Hall of Fame and accomplish everything I've accomplished on the LPGA Tour, I'd be I'd I'd be you're crazy, um, <laughs> especially for someone that just kind of fell into the game. Um, I just kind of started playing because it gave me something I didn't have to compete with my brother. It's been a great ride. I still enjoy the game. I still have a passion for the game. That's one thing about golf. You can play forever. Um, hopefully, I'm not going to play forever, but uh, uh, I still I still love it. When's your next tournament that you plan on playing in? Um, I'm actually going to play in the Pebble Beach Inv- Invitational down um we played Pebble, we played Spyglass, and we played Spanish Bay uh, the week before uh, Thanksgiving. It's, oh, cool. it's a great tournament because some of the PGA pros, some of the champions, the LPGA, the Corn Ferry, um, everybody everybody plays. Uh, we play different tees. Um, you know, the PGA play way back, the champions play next up, the Corn Ferry play back, and, and then we play tees just in front of the champions tour. So it makes it kind of even, and it's a good way to go down down and spend a few days and have some nice glasses of wine and some great food down in Carmel. Yeah, right. Exactly. She spent 29 years and she's still going at it. She's a World Golf Hall of Famer and she's an 831 area coder, which is right next to us here in the 805. Julie Inkster joining the CJ Silas Show. Thank you so much. And the next time you come down to watch a volleyball game at Cal Poly, I would love to have a glass of wine with you because us ladies Ladies in this business that have been doing it as long as we have, we got to stick together and reminisce on all the stuff that we went through because it was a crazy ride, sister, and we're still both liking what we do, which is really important. So thank you so much for giving me a little time today. Hey, well, thanks for having me on. And, you know, I'm going to take you up on that. So, you know, careful what you wish for. I'm serious. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go to break, and then I'm gonna, we're going to exchange our phone numbers or emails. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, CJ. Appreciate it very much. Coming up, a little bit of Major League Baseball at the end of the season in your Cal Poly Sports Update. It's a CJ Silas show on ESPN Radio 1280 AM and FM 101.7, The Ticket. We are back with the CJ Silas show on ESPN Radio 1280. Here's CJ. Welcome back to the CJ Silas show. Wow, such a cool interview with Julie Inkster. I didn't realize she was that successful in her golf career. And when I looked her up and that she's still playing both in the LPGA and on the Legends Tour, We got him twice this month because it's September, as I always say, best month of the year in sports. He's the head odds maker at mybookie.ag, Rafael Esparza. Hello, friend. Hello. How are you doing, CJ? Honestly, I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit I'm just a little distracted because my dog had a little situation with another dog that ran out of the house and yeah. went after him, and we were on the leash walking, and he's been limping now, and I'm afraid it's something bad, and I don't want it to be something bad for a lot of reasons, and I have to hike without him and run without him, and he's home alone. It's just you asked. I don't know how people have had human kids. Sheesh. Uh, Me either. <laughs> Mybookie.ag highest payouts. Welcome bonuses. Let's get right to it. Before we talk Major League Baseball, there are a couple football odds that I wanted to talk about because Tom Brady going back to New England as a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm sure you've got some crazy prop bets, but before we get to those, first interception, first touchdown, what's the money on those two lines? Who will throw the first touchdown pass? Tom Brady's minus 240, Mac Jones plus 180. Uh, Who will throw the first interception? Tom Brady's plus 140, Mac Jones $2. Got it. I'll give Tom Brady plus one. You might be a little nervous going back to Foxborough. I'll I'll take the plus money. My favorite ones is will Tom Brady and Bill Belichick shake hands or hug on the field (laughs) after the game? Yes, minus $4. Will uh, Rob Gronkowski and Bill Belichick shake hands? Or hug Rob uh, Gronkowski. Yes, minus two do- uh, minus two dollars. Uh, will Rob Gronkowski catch a touchdown pass Sunday at Foxborough? Yes, is minus a two sixty. So uh, I think he does. Even though he got hurt last uh, last game, but he you know, there's no way Rob Gronkowski is going to not not gonna play this game. What's the over under on this one? Uh, was it fifty? Some. I mean, it's all. It's gonna be a lot of points. It's right. It's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It dropped down. It opened up at fifty. Now it's dropped down to forty nine. And what about the spread? Tampa Bay's minus six and a half. This one will be bet all the way up to seven. Uh, Tampa Bay will be a touchdown fa- a favorite on the road. It's the late game. It's the eight twenty Eastern Standard Time. But I know you guys are Pacific Standard Time. These East Coast people will probably have to take a nap because it's too late for us. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, this will be a solid seven for Tampa Bay. 
It's the place to go to bet now that legalized sports betting is happening all over the one place. Your best chance, mybookie.ag, head odds maker Rafael Esparza joining the CJ Silas show. Okay, I'm going to play dumb, but I'm not really dumb. I just, I'm, I wasn't a big gambler before it was legalized. When you do the spread, does it only move because of how much money people put on it? Or is it when the odds makers actually change the spread? Uh, both, but we change the spread when money comes in. Okay. Uh, so we're just uh, when you're doing a betting line, we'll use Arizona State, UCLA, uh, UCLA minus three. We'll balance that. We're trying to balance the books. We're trying to see uh, if someone bets UCLA, then we're going to try to get Arizona State money uh, uh, right that back. So you're just trying to balance the books. But uh, yeah, the money co- the money the money comes in is where the number moves. So that's that's what it's all about. It's just the money. Yep. At the end of the day, my goal is I could care less who wins. <laughs> you just want money. All right. What's the other yep. big college football game this weekend? It's got to be Michigan, uh, Wisconsin. I mean, even though it's an early game, I know Cincinnati's playing Notre Dame as well, but Michigan, Wisconsin, the way Wisconsin has played, their quarterback has been awful. Michigan's defense has been really good. Offense has been surprisingly. If this if Wisconsin loses, does maybe Chris think about that? He, does he have to update his resume indeed? Because uh, the way that Wisconsin has been playing, Probably disappointing. It's probably going to be a great game right now. Wisconsin's a minus one favorite at home against Michigan. So that's crazy. But don't forget about the late game. Again, Arizona State, UCLA, fantastic, fantastic game. Going to be a lot of points scoring that one. UCLA coming off a a, a big win. Uh, Arizona State usually plays well on the road than they do at home. So I can't wait to watch that game. That game will have a lot of money because, again, it's at 930 or 1030 Eastern Standard Time. People are trying to make up the money that they had lost earlier in the day. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so everyone is going to lose money. But don't forget Ole Miss and Alabama. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's also in that game. That total opened up at 79. It's now 80. I think they just scored a touchdown right now and they haven't been kicked the ball off. <laughs> Stop. He is at, at odds maker at mybookie.ag. Rafael Esparza on the CJ Silas Show. Last week of the Major League Baseball regular season and all the – all the voting has been in for Rookie of the Year, Cy Young, MVP, all that. So what you've got left, the wild card teams, the NOS champs, and then World Series teams. Give me what you got in Major League Baseball. I'm hoping for a three-way tie in the uh, in American League wild card because I would love to see what would happen. And don't sleep on, again, another West Coast team. Don't sleep on the Seattle Mariners. They're only a half uh, a lead. You can get them at plus 250 to get that wild card spot. Yankees and uh, Red Sox are battling for the last one. I think the Yankees uh, will, will probably close that out, even though I think they're losing uh, as of today. But uh, And then who's going to win the NL West? Your guys' backyard. The Giants are minus $7 over the Dodgers, but if you're a Giant fan, you have to be worried of some injuries uh, coming to them. Maybe the Dodgers can sneak on uh, on that one. But then again, of course, the it's all about the World Series. The Dodgers are still the favorite at three to one. Houston Cheaters, I mean Astros, uh, plus four fifty. You're a San Francisco Giants, seven to one. Uh, don't sleep again on uh, the the St. Louis Cardinals, who just keep on winning and winning and winning. They're twenty to one. They've won, I think, what seventeen straight. If you put a hundred dollars after that seventeen straight winning games and rolled it over. You would cash over sixteen million dollars right oh now. Oh my gosh! Woo! Well, you know who I'm rooting for. I don't care about money or anything, but I I just don't think I don't think the hated orange and black are losing many games this week. So it's probably going to come down to Dodgers Cardinals next week, and then oh my gosh, then they're going to probably have to face those hated, hated, hated Bay Area bums. All right, Roth. Thank you so much. You guys have a fantastic week. Stay safe, everyone, and uh, have a great weekend. He really knows how to fire me up. Cheesh, 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 Rafael Esparza. I was going to talk about Major League Baseball, but I got to give away the kids, the interns, give away the prize. So every month on the show, at the end of the month, we give away a prize. All you have to do is go to Instagram and follow the instructions. I, every It's always changing. <laughs> the kids are like, you should buy these shirts and these posters and all this stuff, and then we'll give them away, and we'll get a lot of people to watch your YouTube. Okay, fine. The kids are doing it. I do nothing except I pick this. Okay, I just picked one. This is the winner for the September CJ Silas Show social media contest. You get to choose a Kobe Bryant signed poster or a Lakers championship poster. Shorte175 at Shorte175, Shorty. Shorty. All right, there's the winner. All right, we're gonna we're gonna contact you. Oh my gosh, the uh, I didn't get to do the Cal Poly sports update. The football team lost. You knew that. Hancock lost. You knew that. Volleyball's back in action. They're doing much better. Really not not. I don't have enough time to do my Cal Poly sports update. But 
We will. We'll catch up next week. And don't forget, depending on the Major League Baseball schedule, we will be on with our 500th show next week. I'm CJ. I'm going to turn off my mic now. And I'm out. Thanks for listening to the CJ Silas Show. Find her podcast on the CJSilasShow.com. Follow her on all social media platforms, including her YouTube channel. Make an appointment to listen every Wednesday on ESPN Radio 1280 AM and FM 101.7. CJ out.